Welcome to Dairy Judging 101. I am Dr. Katherine Knowlton, a professor in the Department of Dairy Science at Virginia Tech. As part of our series on judging cows, we've done a number of videos on taking notes and giving reasons effectively. In this video, Leah Hall, the biochemistry major that was on our 2018 judging team, is going to help me work you through an example class. From my earlier videos on taking notes, you know that there are two types of notes that you need to be taking, descriptive notes and comparative notes. You know that I advocate taking very detailed descriptive notes on the left side of your notebook page, and then equally detailed comparative notes on the right side of the page. Detail is critical. When you're first starting to judge, your reasons will look like the paper on the left, but you've got to get to the one on the right. If you haven't yet watched my video on taking notes, do that now. In it, I talk about why you have to organize your note page this way and how to abbreviate. As I mentioned, Leah Hall is going to help me walk you through an example class to show you how she would take notes on this class. Leah is one of my all-time favorite judging team members because she pushes herself to take on challenges as much as anyone I know. She's a biochem major who has traveled the world, but who had never judged a cow until the fall of 2017. Just a year later, she ended up as one of the most valuable members of the 2018 Virginia Tech team that did so well in all of the contests. So I gave Leah this class of Holstein cows, and I asked her to take notes on it. Cow number one, she wrote plus MS, plus SL, veins. DC with a double underline, meaning that cow is really, really dairy. She's deep, she's open, she's big. She's stylish. Stylish is a word to me that means a cow looks like she's going to go in the show ring. That little upward slanting arrow, what do you think that means? That's the shorthand we use to mean the cow walks uphill. Her front end is higher than her hind end. And then there's that little squiggly mark, leg back, question mark. So maybe her legs are behind her just a little bit. Now let's look at the next cow, number two. She's white. She has a great udder. She's got a wide rear udder, a very milky udder, a lot of veins on her udder. There's that angle symbol again, meaning she's really clean. She's deep bodied. She doesn't quite have as much spring as the other cows got. She's a little short bodied. She just looks a little bit short from end to end. Here's two more cows. See if you can interpret Leah's notes on these. Okay, MS. Yeah, that cow's got an okay udder. A little bit sloped. Quarter, one-fourth. That's shorthand for she has quartering on the floor of her udder. There's that crease between her front and her rear teats. And squiggle RR quarter. What does that mean? She's a little light in her right rear quarter. She is clean. She's got good spring to her rib, but she's shallow ribbed. She roaches. What does roaching mean? Ask your teammates. Ask your coach. They'll tell you. Her legs are back and She's a little bit weak on her pasterns. That squiggly always means a little bit, or eh, I don't really like it. Then number four, she's big, she's black, she's fat, she has a very plain udder. Narrow rear udder, she's got no veins, her fore is weird. Weird isn't a technical term, but you know what, it's going to help me remember her afterwards. Oh yeah, that's that big black cow, that weird fore udder. She has okay legs, her pasterns aren't great. Um, she's got kind of a low foot angle. If you zoom in and look, you can see the foot angle's a little lower than we'd want. She is, however, deep and wide, and she's wide all the way back from the front, all the way back through to her rump. So, there's our comparative notes on these Holsteins. Now that she took her descriptive notes, Leah has decided to place this class. She's decided to place it one, two, three, four, and now she needs to do her comparative notes. So, let's do that. Here's your top pair. One over two, and what she's going to do is she's going to create an opening. She's going to come up with some descriptors of the cows. She's going to start with the most important category in this placing and follow with some detail. And then the second most important category and follow with some detail. And then if there is a third category that she wants to talk, then she'll talk that or maybe she's just got a few little random details to throw in there. And then there's going to be a grant. This is what every pair is going to look like. Here are her notes for why she placed one over two. And while she is looking at the classes, now she's going to write her notes for placing two over three. Again, some descriptors, 
Again, she's going to start with the most important category in making this placing, and then detail, detail, detail. Then the next most important category in making this placing, and then detail, detail, detail. And don't forget that you always need a grant. Here's her notes for this middle pair. She thought it was an easy placing, and so she wrote that down while she was looking at the cows. She didn't count on remembering it later on. And her first category is utter, and then she's got a whole bunch of detail. And then she's got some depth and a little bit of detail. And then she's got some leg stuff and then a little bit of detail. And then there is her grant. Notice that she is still using a lot of abbreviations. You don't have to use the same ones she uses, but you got to come up with your own. You do not have enough time to write. Two is more level on her utter floor than three and is less quartered. Two is more balanced in her rear udder because three is light in the right rear. Two has a higher and wider rear udder attachment. That's what Leah's going to say. She does not have time to write out all of those sentences. If she tries to do that, she's not going to get enough information. So at this stage, you've got to use your abbreviations. Depth, F and R rib. What do you think that means? Two has more depth in her fore and rear rib. And again, she's going to move on to her final pair. She's going to place three over four. She's going to put a descriptor in there to paint a picture of the class. Okay, so that's that big black cow, that smooth cow. She's probably going to say something like that. Then, what's the most important category? What's the most important reason why three places over four? And then detail, detail, detail. What's the next most important reason that three places over four? Detail, detail, detail. Don't forget your grant. And then, and your coaches will tell you about this, you always want to appreciate something about the last place cow, but you can just slam her also. So for instance, this big black cow, what do we appreciate about her? She's big, right? And so I appreciate Four's width and power, but, and now I'm going to say something mean about her, but she's just too smooth to place any higher. Here's what her notes look like. Three over four, there's her descriptor, the bigger smooth black four. Her first category is cleaner everywhere. So that's her shorthand. Later on, she's going to know that she can talk any element of cleanliness or angularity, and it will be true. She's wrote QMS, Quality Memory System, Veining, and there's her grant. And she's probably going to appreciate that cow's size, but she says this cow is too smooth and not milky enough to place higher. Now that you've seen her work through the steps of taking notes on this class, her descriptive notes on the left, her comparative notes on the right. Let's listen to what this set is going to end up sounding like. And as she talks them, I want you to follow along on her notes and see how she is going from the abbreviated notes into actually giving the set of reason. So here's Leah on this class of Holstein four-year-olds. One, two, three, four is my placing for these Holstein four-year-old cows. I found a top pair of good utter dairy cows to start the class, and I chose one for her advantage in size. One is a taller and longer cow with more spring of rib. Also, she is more stylish with more of an uphill run. One is more youthful in her udder than two. I concede that the white two has a higher and wider rear udder. Next, the white cow easily places second over three for her advantage in udder. Two is more balanced in her rear udder because three is light in her right rear. Her udder is higher and wider than three. Additionally, she has more depth to her fore and rear rib. While neither cow is good-legged, two's legs are more squarely beneath her and she is less roached. I grant that three is the longer-bodied cow. And finally, three places over the bigger but smooth black four. Three is cleaner through her shoulders, shows more refinement over her ribs, and is thinner in her thighs. Three has more apparent quality to her udder with more veining. I admit four has more drop and sweep to her barrel. I appreciate her for her deep frame, but she was just too smooth and lacked the milkiness to place any higher. It is for these reasons that I placed this class of Holstein four-year-old cows one, two, three, four. In this presentation, what I really wanted to emphasize is how you get from your descriptive notes to your comparative notes, and that you take these while you're looking at the class, and that you need to be very detailed in both. I hope this helps. Good luck to you.